What up guys, this is Lord Eager 3 of Kev doing a review of Alpha 17, which I've been testing for a few months with Zippy and Tau and so on. So uh, right now I'm going to be showing you how the techs, uh, the, new tech, the new technologies and uh, how they're arranged. So uh, I think first things first is we're going to start with the house. So as you can see, well, it looks different. Now there's uh, only one house population increase, but it's not like by a number, a certain number, it's actually by a percent. And we have the loom, which is the same as, as Alpha 16, plus 50 health, and like I said, the house population, plus 20% to every house, which is pretty cool. And then we got the usual fertility festival, which will unlock us our females from houses. This is only if you're doing a, a really big boom. You'd use this. If not, you'd want more men than females. So next we're going to be looking at the farmstead. So, in the farmstead we got the iron plow, which is now actually available in the first... in the first... Uh, in the first age. And it's actually... there's one... one upgrade for the iron plow. Well, it's not called the iron plow each time. Every single... every single age basically so we got the first one which increases by 15% if I'm not mistaken yeah 15% the second one also increases by 15% and the last one increases by 25% so that's pretty efficient for farming I guess and then next we're gonna look at our corals corals like so far I think is the most useful useless building but now we actually got two really important upgrades which is the horse so here we got plus 10 speed to the horse. Plus 10 speed, yeah. And uh, that's one. And then the second one. So basically it's 20, well not really 20% 20, because 20 then it takes 10 of that 10%. So it's more than 20%. And then we got obviously the 50% sheep time build. And so next we're going to look at our, after this we're going to look at our um, storehouse. Oh yeah, right. Uh, now, uh, if in the end, for example, you're you have lots of farms and you want a bigger population, you could take five horses, a few corals, and then just get the sheep, and it's pretty efficient. It doubles doubles your food. And so now we got our storehouse. Now, like as you can see, you can both have stone and metal, and without them, for example, uh, sorry. And like I said, bef uh, like for the like for the farms, now there's actually three phases for every single one three phases for every single one so we got for the axe which is 20 and then 50 so it's basically 20 20 percent twice 20 percent and then plus 50 percent if I'm not mistaken no it's actually pl twice plus 15 percent and then a plus 50 percent for every single one so in the end your your man will be mining like crazy people so as you can see another plus 15 plus 15 and then a plus 50 and now all units, their standard shuttle capacity is actually 10. So you can upgrade that three times, for, uh, twice to five, and then once to 10 in the end. And that just gives you 30, 30 shuttle capacity. So now you can have 30 shuttle, and this also increases for the horses as well. So yeah, that's why the coral can be useful at the end, because it can actually be efficient, since you're already at, let's say, during that time of the game, you'd probably be at 10,000 or more food. And so spending 1,000 to get 2,000 is not really a mess. Now we're going to look at the uh, upgrades. And now basically you can, uh, in the first three, you upgrade um, basically every single type of infantry to have more attack. So 25%, I think, each time or, or less. No, 20% the first time and then 25% uh, the second time. So that's uh, how a lot of damage for every single unit. Plus uh, another technology we're going to show you that's going to even increase it. So as you can see, 20, 25. So basically for horse, horse infantry, oh, well, horse, horse melee, horse ranged, infantry melee, infantry ranged, there's those four upgrades. And now this is just a hack armor. And, and then this is another more hack armor for your, in, for your infantry and horses. And this is actually just for heroes. So, oh yeah, all heroes. 
And now we're going to look at the towers. So basically here we got the 80 meters, which is the maximum range. No, it's the minimum. The minimum range between them. And like this, uh, the tower attack is actually more harder since one tower doesn't cover the other. Except if you do that one upgrade, the arrow, which increases just basically eight, adds 8 meters to the range. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then you can also have uh, more armor, more defense uh, for your towers than the usual. But now you can have both instead of just only one of them. So you can have murder holes and more default hour arrows, which is pretty cool. So you can actually have a lot of arrows, a lot of range, and that's really cool. So now the outpost is just standard, standard stuff. But it's actually more useful now since, you know, uh, Fog of War. Now we got our healers, so we got our healer upgrades. And we can get our healer to be actually really, really efficient. You can increase its healing range and healing rate both at the same time. Not We don't have to choose between one anymore. And so then we got our, obviously, uh, faster healing in, within the temple. And then we got our regeneration, which is really slow but really useful. Also, a new thing about the healers is that they do not cost metal anymore. Not at all. They don't cost any metal anymore. They only cost 250 food. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm just building a barracks. I forgot to build it earlier. So now we're going to look at a fortress. So we got Will to Fight, which increases 25 attack to every single shoulder. So plus the upgrades in the blacksmith, plus that upgrade can give you a hell lot of damage. I assure you. And then we got obviously for the, uh, well, this is just a mess. This is just a Macedonian thing. Shield bearers get more, sh uh, get a better shield. And so, yeah, we got our barracks. And in our barracks, we have living conditions. So basically, living conditions lets us regenerate our troops inside our barracks. So now on attacks, we don't have to necessarily build a temple so we, since we can just heal them inside our actual barracks, which is pretty cool. And then we got conscription, like faster batch training, and then obviously champion units, which is, which is pretty cool. And now we're going to look at our... Sieges, so plus 25 crest damage, plus 2 hack armor levels, and then we just got 20 less wood, and that was 20 less metal there, and then bolt shooter accuracy increased by 25%, and I'll be talking about the bolt shooter later, because it's been made more powerful since not lots of people used it before, so now we're looking at our library for the Macedonians, which gives plus 100 more health, double the arrows, double the default arrows for the civic center which as you can see gives us lots of health for the system so it's a really strong civic center and then we got a wonder a wonder tech in every single wonder to make them more useful which actually adds plus 50 population to every single uh, no not but basically adds 50 to the max of your population so in late game because it's really expensive. It's really, really expensive. So, not, well, it's pretty expensive. As you can see, 3,000 food, 2,000 wood, and then a bit of metal. But it's going to help you. I mean, plus 50 more soldiers or champions. That's, that's really useful. So, now, we're going to be looking at the females. So, now the, the females build much, much faster, as you can see. They take 8 seconds each, I think, instead of 15, which is almost double the rate. And now, I wanted to mention the army camps. In Alpha 16, the army camps built like crazy. I mean, seriously, you could just pop them out in a few seconds next to a fort or right next to a civic center, since you can build an er enemy territory. And that was much so, so OP. And so, as you can see, the females are building really fast. And the Roman army camp now takes 250 seconds compared to the fort, which takes 300 seconds. So it's actually a bit faster than the fort. And here I'm showing you that our farms, the farms, actually cost 100, 100 wood again, but they're made much stronger and more resistant. Since uh, I don't really think that five arrows could actually 
destroy a farm, so that's why it's gonna take more than that to destroy a farm. So we got our army camp almost ready. So as you can see, it takes a, a good, a good, a good uh, amount of more time than it did before. So that's cool. So now let's build some bolt shooters. Well, first thing to say is that the Roman ones already have more range than the usual ones. Are more efficient, I, I think. So that's that. And as you can see, maybe you've noticed, but the troops don't have formations anymore. Well, there's one formation skirmish that's available, but the other the other formations have been temporarily disabled, at least for Alpha 17. And that's one thing. And the actually the game lags less since uh, formations. Uh, Formations uh, will lag it out a bit, and uh, so for the moment, there's you can't abuse formations like you could do in Alpha 16, which I think is a plus. But also, many people think that actually formations are are good. Well, not like they were good in Alpha 16, but they should be there. But probably they probably will, but later when they get them to work. So here we have our five bolt shooters, and we're gonna send them to the enemy to test out their, their their damage and stuff so also the Roman bolt shooters look different uh, you probably know that already than the actually the other ones they're like smaller I guess and well so another thing is that also be nerfed is how fast walls and wall towers build well, wall towers take a, a good amount of time to build. Walls are still pretty fast, but wall towers, wall towers are pretty. So as you can see here, it's 120 seconds per wall tower. So now walls are going to take much longer to build, and you won't be able to just like spawn them up really quickly in the middle, uh, just in front of your base, which was a bit OP. Anyways, I don't really like walls that much. Not necessarily when I'm attacking, but when I'm defending with them as well, since my troops are less mobile. But if I got a few catapults behind, it's okay. But I like to be able to move my troops uh, in and out really easily, which is like in gates. Gates are small, so they don't get past really easy. So that's that. So also want to mention that elephants are less squishy because uh, before they could just you know get wrecked pretty quick and so they're stronger but they also cost more and then we also got the caval the cavalry well the horses which is more squishy a, l a little weaker you can obviously upgrade it and get it stronger but it's weaker like that uh, Cav rushes are harder. I think the armor on spearmen has been increased by a lot. Because before they were almost as weak as skirmishers. And so it was pretty easy for the skirm cap to hit and run. And then you got the skirm cav rushes and all of that. And yeah. So that wasn't much fun. And also the the horse lancers. Well, the, the lancers on horse. Not, not the lancers. The spearmen, they actually don't like just poke. They are more like uh, more like jousting, and basically, they come in, they do a high damage attack, and then it takes a lot uh, longer to do another one. So basically, instead of having lots of small attacks, they basically do one high damage attack. So that's it. And also talking about w walls. There are no default arrows in the wall towers anymore, so you have to actually put men in them to have uh, that. And uh, so now, also phasing each time you phase, uh, the health of the citizens increases. And yeah, I guess that's it. So now look at our uh, now. Now we can look at our um, bolt shooters and how much range and damage they have. So the Romans have a bit more range. Well, 
and from there they can actually hit that house right here and they hit it pretty hard as you can see the health going down really fast well I mean it is not a very strong house so I guess that but to people who might think they're OP yes maybe they're a little bit overpowered but also they are really slow and unpacking and packing time is is also slow so you can see that um, once the troops surround them there's not much we can do if they're able to attack for example if you're on a bit on a hill and 30 spearmen come at you and you notice them the second they're in your range you can take them out and you'll probably lose like two two of your uh, bolt shooters so two to two to thirty is sounds 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 like a good deal so as you can see here they didn't notice them that quickly they're still gonna kill all of them but they're gonna take damage and that's not what that's not what we want so here we got our guys who wrecked houses and then for for some reason uh, I could cancel unpacking or cancel packing and now they're all unpacked so as you can see the times are really slow and horrible so now uh, they're, they're getting all the, all the spearmen they're sending at us are gonna get a uh, get around them and then probably kill them so look look how slow they are spearmen are catching up pretty easy and for example if if I wanted to do something I wouldn't be able to so now I'm gonna look at the Iberians quick note on the Iberians the elite skirmishers that shoot fire the the, citi the citizen ones that are on foot have been nerfed because they were a bit too powerful but they're, st they're still good but they're just a little little they do a little less damage because once they got to elite they could wreck anything so we didn't want the Iberians being too strong well I don't know Iberians is one of my favorite civs so you know I kind of I kind of like them strong but I guess it's the right thing you know so here I'm going to show uh, the new the new thing called w fog of war which basically doesn't allow you to see changes in the enemy's base so here we're going to explore for the first time and here we go now we can see his base almost fully and then we'll come back later and see see what's different so here we go this is how the base looks at two minutes and here we got our battering rounds for a demonstration after of what's new with the battering rounds so now I'm gonna see you in a bit I'm just gonna increase the speed of this Hey again guys, now we're going to go in and see the changes, so as you see the house just appeared out of nowhere, because usually we'd see the changes in the explorer, I think that was like a fault or something, but now it's working, and as you can see there are, the farms are built now, when in the fog it showed us that it wasn't built, now there's a barrack over there, and so basically the base has changed, and basically that's fog of war, which is actually really scary, since already sometimes when people build SIF centers right next to my territory, even when I do notice them, like I have a hard time to basically to protect against it. So what am I gonna do? Like when I don't actually see the building, so it's just gonna pop out of nowhere. I won't have the advantage of his troops building something, so I'd completely get smashed. Well, unless he's not really good, and so that's pretty scary. So now you have to constantly explore around your base, make sure no one's building anything. That's why outposts are really useful now. They cost 80 wood. 
for information. And now battering rams can actually attack units. As you can see, they almost one shot females. Well, maybe it is one shot. Yeah, it's one shot females. Well, obviously the men they take more, but also every unit has been increased plus three hack damage because of this. But it's because it's because basically battering rams were left defenseless each time they attack fortresses so now they can at least defend so you can't just kill them with one calf and they can't do anything about it they take out that calf but with a good five calf you could probably easily wreck uh well calf swords you could probably easily wreck all of these so as you can see the battering rams are doing some damage they are smashing they are smashing these units they also have more health so now uh so also like this um Civilizations without catapults are not as much as a disadvantage as uh, they were in Alpha 16. Well, that's what I think. Because it's really, really annoying when you're having like a fort battle and then there's a catapult and you can't reach the way you can reach. And it's just it's just a pain. So now with battering rams being a bit stronger, I mean, that's, that's, that's good news. So now I can... Uh, that's, that's why I didn't play Iberians all the time because... You know, I wanted catapults. So now, guys, I'm going to talk about what they added to Carthage. Now, what they added to Carthage, well, I, I, I enjoy it really much. Because the Carthage, Carthage had a shipyard. Well, that was that's really expensive and takes a long time to build. Approximately 500 seconds. I think that's exactly full. With one builder, obviously. And what it did was just, well, obviously it has great boats in it. But other civilizations had the same thing with boats. Just, it's in the dock. So it would be like way faster and cheaper and so on. Look, the, the shipyard costs, well actually it's not that expensive right now, I, I don't think. Yeah, it costs like 300, 300 wood maybe. So here it's built and actually now it gives a territory, a territory expansion. And so this is pretty cool for Oasis maps and island maps. For example, you see this little island. Now I have the whole thing. I can build like a barrack on it and a tower. And for example, on Oasis, you'd come next to their base, like the front part. You'd put that. It'd claim a bit of territory and you can have like an aggressive attacking point. So thanks for watching this review. See you on my next vid. I'll probably do some matches on CVN and maybe even the hands mod, the one that adds China. We'll see if I can do that. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and check out this iPhone and Android application I'm building. Thanks, guys.